In today's video, we are looking at the Aurier HDA 935 EUNC switcher, which allows you to extract full lossless atmos from your sound devices to the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and the Sonos Arc, which has an EUNC port. So if you are using a TV without EUNC port, this is the solution for you. Upfront summary, this works and I'm able to get full lossless Dolby Atmos even on a TV that doesn't have eARC port and has no Dolby Atmos support. Now before this device, the most popular device out there is the HD Fury Arcana. I've tested that before. It works and it is a small, nifty, well-built device but it costs 299 US dollars. This Aurier device costs 129 US dollars, sometimes less depending on the discount, and it comes with an extra three HDMI ports for switching functionality. In short, it is a much more flexible device, it works and is cheaper. But if you have the time, let's stick around to find out a little bit more about what this can do. The latest soundbar out there in the market, they use HDMI ARC or EARC port to get audio into the soundbar in a convenient one cable solution. Regular HDMI, they carry sound information on the regular sound channels in the direction from the source to the TV. HDMI ARC and EARC carry sound from your TV to the soundbar. So whatever you play on the TV, be it the built-in apps or through the air, over the air channels, or using another device on other HDMI inputs on the TV, the sound gets passed to the soundbar for playback through the HDMI ARC or EARC port. For soundbars that get audio input from an ARC port, you can't just connect a source device like an Apple TV to the soundbar and expect sound to play. The sound is extracted only from the ARC channel. Now, there are two versions of ARC. One is the regular ARC and the other being the eARC variant. The primary difference is the bandwidth that can be carried across. For the bandwidth allocated to audio, ARC allows for transmission of about 1 megabits per second. For eARC, the bandwidth allocated to audio is 37 megabits per second. So if you're trying to get Dolby Atmos sent from your TV to your soundbar, you can get it even with ARC levels of bandwidth through the Dolby Digital Plus codec. But that will be lossy Dolby Atmos. If you want true, full bandwidth, high quality, lossless Dolby Atmos, you will need eARC with its enhanced bandwidth so that the soundtrack need not be compressed. For the TV to pump out Dolby Atmos, it must first support Dolby Atmos decoding. If the TV is not advertised to support Dolby Atmos, it might not report Dolby Atmos support to the streaming app and thus the streaming app won't stream Atmos tracks. You should also ensure that the TV is set to bit stream audio output and enable Dolby Digital Plus and the pass-through processing so that you get a better chance of streaming Atmos over to the soundbar. Now, if your TV doesn't support Atmos or doesn't have ARC or EARC functionality, using a soundbar like the Sonos Beam or the Sonos ARC might be limited to regular 5.1 or at best lossy Atmos. In a case where there isn't even a regular HDMI ARC port, using such a soundbar is simply out of question completely. Now, if you're trying to display on a computer monitor or projector or trying to get the sound from a laptop or PC into that soundbar, it won't work without a device like this Aurier eARC switcher. Now, prior to this device, there were only two routes available to most users. Either you upgrade your TV or you add a device like the HD Fury Arcana. The HD Fury Arcana is a well-built piece of kit with an OLED display that shows you what the input and output format is and it works pretty well. But that thing costs 299 US dollars. Now, not only is it pricey, it only works with one HDMI input at any one time. So if you're using a specific streamer like the Apple TV, you won't be able to connect another device like a Blu-ray player or gaming console without buying another switcher that is at least HDMI 2.0 compatible. Now, this is where the Aurier eARC switcher comes in. To summarize the major features, I'll say that it is an eARC compatible device. It allows for full bandwidth Dolby Atmos lossless sound from three HDMI 2.0 ports. It allows you to connect up to three external devices and the EDID settings allow for all external devices to recognize Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, capable support. The supported resolution goes up to 4K 60Hz. The output port to the soundbar is a full lossless HDMI eARC port, which works well with the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and the Sonos Arc. 
Now, on top of that, the HDMI ARC connection also accepts incoming sound from the TV through the eARC port, and it is automatically detected and switched over. So you will still be able to get sound from the TV when using the built-in app through this device. Although that has proven to be a little bit tricky and the support is kind of flaky. Now, other output options includes a 3.5mm analog stereo output and an optical port that supports 5.1 surround sound output. These are more like extra features which doesn't take full advantage of the device that you're paying for, but it will work nicely if you say you're trying to output this to older devices like an uh, older audio preamp or external power speakers or even headphones. Now, the unit comes also with a power adapter, which I have it plugged in. It supplies power through a micro USB port, which is plugged into the rear. Now, there are LED indicators at the front of the device that allows you uh, to monitor which output, uh, which rather, which input is being turned on and accepting sound. There's also a button at the rear that will allow you to specify the format, whether it is a two channel or 5.1 or 7.1 surround. The button at the top of the unit right here, it allows you to select from any of the three HDMI sources, uh, be it HDMI in one, two, or three, one port on the front, two extra at the back. Or you could simply use the uh, included remote to switch any of the uh, HDMI sources. There's also a power button on and off, although the unit does actually automatically power on and off depending on whether the connected devices support HDMI CEC power controls. Now, all in all, this device, it works. I have an Apple TV 4K plugged into the unit through one of the HDMI port. I tried port one and I tried port three. And uh, the TV is then connected via the HDMI arc, uh, port here. The TV I use is a 75 inch Samsung TV from 2016 and it doesn't support Atmos. I paired up my Sonos Beam Gen 2 with the Aurier eARC switcher through the soundbar output port, which is right here. Okay, so when all this is all connected up, you can see that the streamer will be able to identify an external sound device that is capable of supporting Dolby Atmos and a TV that is able to support Dolby Vision. Now, when you play back a track that is able to support both, your Sonos S2 app will also identify that it's playing back Dolby Atmos. In this particular case, I use a Disney Plus app on the Apple TV 4K. I've tried Netflix and Prime too, and they do stream out Dolby Atmos to the device, although the selection on Prime is kind of limited when it comes to Dolby Atmos content. Now, another use case of this device, which I've hinted at earlier, is that when you have a laptop or a PC that you want to extract Dolby Atmos soundtrack from, when it's connected to, say, a TV monitor or even a projector. Now, most, if not all, computer monitors or projectors will not have an ARC or EARC port. So you're pretty much stuck with the external monitor's crappy uh, stereo speakers, right? The sound will leave a lot to be desired. But if you introduce the Aurier e arc switcher in between, you will then be able to connect a high-quality soundbar with full lossless Dolby Atmos effects coming from your computer while well, assuming your PC has Dolby Atmos enabled. Now, there are some downsides to this device. In my videos, I test them extensively and I try to be as objective as possible. So if there are issues, I do not avoid them and I try to raise them up. Now, almost every device out there has some downsides and there are always factors to justify and consider in order to, uh, well, justify their existence. Now, in the case of the Aurier eARC switcher, I have to say that the build quality is not the most inspiring. The external casing is mostly made of plastic, but the HDMI port, they seems to be uh, pretty strong enough and uh, pretty well soldered. So you should be able to plug in and out uh, quite a bit. Um, the entire unit feels a little bit too light for my liking. Now, while I don't think that weight has anything to do to make it feel better or perform better, it sometimes does inspire um, confidence in a product. Now, the accompanied remote control is not the most sensitive, although you do have to get within like 15 degrees. It, it does add a touch of convenience to the operation of this unit. The handshaking, however, is uh, kind of slow. So sometimes to get the unit to start playing sound, it takes a couple of seconds. Although once it's playing, there's uh, almost no observable dropout in terms of sound. Now, throughout the entire length of one video, I did encounter um, two blank 
frames, which show up as a green uh, frame. Now, each one lasted about 0.05 of a second, so it's very brief, but enough for you to uh, possibly miss it even, but you know, I'm just showing you, I'm just telling you what it is and what I observed. So to ensure that you have the best experience with this device, I do recommend that you use the highest quality HDMI cables available. Uh, note that I said highest quality and I didn't say highest price. I do not believe in spending unnecessarily on expensive cables. They are not going to enhance your sound or picture quality, no matter what the manufacturers say. Now, I have tested and used this particular Ugreen 8K HDMI 2.1 cables. Now, I'll be leaving the affiliate links down in the video description below, or you could just scan this QR code right here on the screen. They, they are by far the best value cables that you can use for your setup. So if your setup is working well and your cables are serving you well, there's really no need to change them, right? As long as there's some certified HDMI 2.0 cables, you should be good to go. But if you're going to be buying new cables anyway, do check out these cables. They will minimize any connectivity issues and ensure that you're getting enough bandwidth to push the highest quality image and sound quality through to your TV and your soundbar setup. Now, despite all the small imperfections here and there, I must say that this Orie eARC switcher is very well priced at USD $129. Now, I've seen this on a discount sometimes. So, at about one third the price of the HD Fury Arcana, I believe it is a real good alternative. You could buy like two of these and still have spare change to buy the HDMI cables um, before you even spend as much as the HD Fury Arcana. Now, one of the superpowers of this device is simply is affordability. Now, your TV is going to break down one of these days over the next couple of years. And when you upgrade, it is most certainly going to come with an eARC port in any case. So my recommendation now is not to get the HD Fury Arcana at $299, US but at a price of $129, and with some discount, maybe less, it does seem like a viable solution uh, to get over this period between now and when you upgrade your TV. Now, if you're still not convinced about this unit and want to learn more about the HD Fury Arcana, I strongly suggest that you check out this video, which I've made about the much more expensive HD Fury Arcana. I will see you over in that video.